Buenos días y bienvenidos. Good morning and welcome to this campaign for the act of the presentation of the prohibition of the nuclear weapons. De ser hospitalarios, de ser we, el huésped we would like to welcome very much you for the Complutense Entonces, además, University, and this is the paranym of the University, de la de la Universidad Complutense, que fue and it was destroyed during the Civil War, where you are seated no in the 39 nada. Here, there wasn't anything because it was destroyed by the, the army. Now you can start this campaign and start, and we can do everything that we earn and to make a world. I will pass the word to Luis García Hernández, and he will be speaking in the name of Fernando Mayor Zaragoza. Thank you for everyone for being here. Thank you very much, Setsuko. Thank you, Federico Mayor Zaragoza. Thank you, Petrovic. And especially... Okay, welcome, everyone. Thank you for coming here. Thank you, Setsuko, for coming here. Thank you, Federico, Pedro, Petrovic, Carlos Umaña. Thank you for Complutense. Thank you, the Philology University. And thank you for Jose Mejia for being here and for making this event possible. And thank you for the institution that uh, uh, lended us the equipment for the in interpretation. Okay, we have this marvelous event here today, so thank you everyone. So there's a council today, so I, I am named of the director, so he... I want to unite my, vo my voice for the, uh, and for the abolition of the weapon, nuclear weapons. We have to guarantee the security of the world, fight for the peace. We cannot have in, the, in, in hands a weapon that can destroy the humanity. We are in favor of all the initiative that can protect the human beings in this country and all around the world. Thank you very much. Welcome, Setsuko. Really, um, uh, I feel very honored to have uh, Carlos Umaño, Federico Juan uh, Mayor Zaragoza, Carlos Umaña, and I'm very honored to present here. And uh, well, uh, Federico, you are at your home and you studied here, and you are, and also you have a brilliant career in the pharmacy, and it's very important in this event for today. It has a very recognized work in the UNESCO. And you also have the representation of the Federation of the Peace. Federico shows us a path where we always have the the doors open for the collaboration. We had the, the project of the Universal Quixote that was translated for more than 200 languages. And he ma you made the prologue and uh, helped all, in all the organization process. So welcome at your home. And we always remember you and you always will have the doors open here. And you are very necessary to our society. Thank you.
I come here today and I say that with all my heart, with a great hope that we can get finally the mobilization, mobilize everyone. I always found, find interesting and I, I interpret that as a great uh, wisdom of whisper that the letter of the United Nations doesn't start uh, saying we the government or we the states. It starts saying we the people. We the people. We want to avoid the horror of war to the future generations. We want to substitute little by little the weapons for the words. We want to, if we want peace, we cannot have war. We cannot prepare war. Nuestro comportamiento cotidiano. So we have to change decir, our daily, um, daily life in las uh, personas en la gente de la responsabilidad. So everybody has a responsibility to make this historic uh, step to stop using the, uh, the weapons, having so many victims, millions of victims. Después de una batalla, siempre después de una confrontación bélica. That's pues bien, the result, ahora, result we get after a war. En aquel momento, efectivamente, yo esto me gusta insistir. At that time, si I want to insist, and if we en think, aquel momento, en el año 45, with the whole power el of the masculinity that comes from the beginning of the times, only 10% of the population intervened or were participants in the democracy of what, what, what is called. And 90% was born and lived in 40 kilometers square. So only the ones that had their access for the university could know what was happening in the world. So when Roosevelt had this decision, we were very little people that would know because the women didn't have any power in the society. And the ones that were active, we were uh, too few to have an, an impact. Now, everything has changed. Now, I come here with a great hope. So I always said and I, to Pedro Arrojo, and I said to him that I had the, the chance to live very nearly Enrique Avic in, in October, in the president of the Republic, Reagan, with Gorbachev. Gorbachev said, tomorrow we have to give the world the great news of the abolition of the nuclear weapons. Because it is a threat that's intolerable. When I think about my sons, my daughters, my granddaughters, it's not tolerable. It's unacceptable. So that's something that has consequences that are irreversible. It's not possible that this keeps up. So I thought, that's good. So tomorrow, both presidents are going to announce that they had to think that United States and the Soviet Union, now Russia, had the most uh, power of the nuclear weapons. Now they, so they, they now have decreased in 70% the nuclear weapons. So when they, the Gorbachev said to Reagan, well, now we can just destroy the humanity 300 times instead of a thousand. 
but we had to announce the total abolition of the weapons. And then, when they spoke with the, the Parliament, Reagan uh, kept the decision, so they have to... Uh, derogate the, the nuclear weapons. So that great news didn't have the place as I wished. So there are other things that were said in so many times, even though there were a lot of efforts to say, uh, say no to the nuclear weapons, but there are still some countries that uh, keep these uh, nuclear weapons that have this massive destruction capacity. Nowadays, the United Kingdom is not, not in, the, in the European Union anymore. Parece que ser que tiene menos de 300 rojivas, pero de todas maneras so, es lo mismo que le estaba diciendo. We, we, we are not no a United uh, uh, nadie, Europe nadie right now, but it's not tolerable for any country to have nuclear weapons. Conjunto, incluso por accidente, incluso Even if it's by accident, because, for example, error by error or by any circumstances, desencadenarse. Una there can may be, there may be an, an situation of destruction by the nuclear weapons. So I wanted to say that when I, I knew that we had uh, invited Sertsuko with us, and I, we can uh, hear this direct message from her, I thought that it was very important to make, live, to, to relieve again this sense of, this conscience of prohibition of the nuclear weapons. It's not about the government, it's about us, the people. Del Presidente Republicano de los Estados Unidos, so, saben, United States President, secretos, uh, Mr. Trump, now it's now separating and putting aside the, the, the treaty that they have made with Iran. Vamos a movilizarnos. And now I say, we have to mobilize ourselves. Referentes, como representa en estos momentos, and now we have to hear our representative, like the important people like Setsuko, and think about what's important and not wait the decision of the government, not wait of the, the decision of the, state, the, the states. We, the people, we are going to mobilize the prohibition for the future generation, for the, intergener for the intergenerational what we have to do is to look at the eyes of our, our kids and of our grandkids and say, we will not betray you, we will be courageous, we will, we, we have the able to, to use the cell phones and to, have, to manifest our opinions and to say, if you, and to say, Mr. Trump, if you doesn't change what you're going to do, Senor, whatever of the Russia or, or Mr. Somebody, we will stop buying your products. We, the people, we, the people, have a great power in, the, in our hands. We, the people, have a great The media sometimes doesn't make available the voice of people, but this will be, uh, will be uh, conquered and there will not be silence. In the 15th of May, I, I, I wrote the crime of the silence. The implication is very necessary and I'm sure that after this reunion, we will have the conscience now, from now on as a provision of 
each one, uh, each one's actions. Because if we do not do this, someday we will, we will have to hear that the sentence that I heard when I, I was 16 years old of a great intellectual French of writing the, the past. It was Camus. Les I despise you because tanto, you, can, you can do so much and you Ahora did so little. Ya podemos. Ya podemos. But now we Tenemos the people can do things. We can change the world. And we can say to the future generations no and we no would not like to hear you can do, you, you could do so much but you did so little. Thank you very much. Thank you, Federico Mayor Zaragoza. Now we are presenting Pet uh, Milutin Petrovi. And he is a historian from the Complutense and from the safety uh, against the nuclear weapons. He worked with the foreign policy. Tiempo a la clave. He has a, a lot of articles in the El País, the Spanish newspaper. So please have the word. Well, please, I would like to thank uh, the university the Pet, uh, to invite me here, for which cause I also fight. I would like, I am very honored to share this space with you. So I consider uh, Ms. Mrs. Sterlow as an example of, for the hum humanity. So the first trial was in was in, in the desert of New Mexico, where it's called the the Dead Pass. And it meant a great achievement in the experimental physics, but created a weapon that was capable of destroying the, the humanity as we know it. Robert Oppenheimer, director científico del proyecto Manhattan, uh, en scientific Bogotá, Manhattan la scientific, made a, 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 a comparison as the Prometheus de Alfred Nobel, que de, de que and taking away the Alfred Nobel's hope Bernard Brody, of banning the, the war. So it concluded that the war was unthinkable. En la guerra termonuclear, pensando when the thermonuclear la weapon would think and unthinkable and highly impossible, but it was very possible. So, but then they arrived with 70,000 artifacts. The impossibility the, to destroy the enemy, the destruction, the mass destruction as, uh, assurance, it was diminishing uh, an understanding that was um, seen in a, a lot of uh, treaties of the uh, dis, uh, disarmation and verification. All the superpowers are now in this uh, making better the, the systems. Lo cual, dicho de paso, eh, hace un flaco favor al tratado de no proliferación que supone que habrá eh, reuniones de buena fe. Now we were going to have the reunion for, uh, to talk about this. Eh, la actualidad se mantiene los mismos niveles de alerta que en la Guerra Fría. The, the same hair trigger alert is the same as since the Cold War. And the United States and the Fe Russian Federation uh, have the Pero president that authorized the reprisal in the case of attack. Con there are a lot of arsenal, interests and, and a huge arsenal of weapons uh, available. Como de de 
So, there is a deterrence about the situation that seeing the enemies as, as no nuclear. The, politics, the nuclear politics have the reciprocity and the, the changes and of the power have the reflection of the, if, uh, on the world, even more if the United States approves it. Recently, there's a new kind of missiles called hypersonic because they go 5 to 20 times of the sound's uh, velocity. They are launched in China and Russia. So they have the reaction times at its minimum, and these characteristics uh, can avoid the anti-missile systems. And they are considered the uh, weapons against targets. What impact can they have and, uh, and hair state trigger? One missile takes 30 minutes to get to this goal, and the president has seven minutes to make a choice. Some analysts of the United States propose systems automatic to respond to that. Machines at the head of a nuclear button. This brings us back to the, the maximum tension of the Cold War. The magazine Bulletin of Atomic Scientists since 40, the, uh, 1947 established the risk of a nuclear war. And as a metaphor, in the 2020 value, the danger is uh, the danger that humanity goes on uh, 100 seconds and defines this state as a uh, Something that's very dangerous. Can the nuclear wars uh, avoid the war? Kenneth Walt and Scott Sagan have debated about the possession of nuclear wars. In the context of the post Cold War, in the Second Nuclear Era, the new multipolar order where the nuclear weapons are an important part of the exterior politics and of, and of the defense. There are five superpowers in ONU that are of the Council of Security, United States, Russia, United Kingdom, France, and China. Israel had the, the bomb since the 60s, and India and Pakistan realized Israel in 1998. The, the Iraq nuclear program was destroyed uh, after the Gulf War and took down this program in 1998. Ukraine has the third most, uh, the biggest arsenal of the world since 1998. And until the, it was transferred to Russia in 2002. Libya bought the, scientific, uh, the Pakistani scientific proliferation of Abidou Per Khan, an atomic kit uh, that consisted of cent uh, centrifugers of the enrichment of the uranium. So it, it's now being supervised the OEA, and its continuity is in great danger of uh, being abandoned by the United States, and it threatened the sanctions of the uh, companies that maintain the Tehran business. Pyongyang administrates uh, with, uh, very well the, the status of the nuclear superpower. In 2017, there was a trial of a hydrogen bomb. So they have a stock to produce between 35 and 60 heads of bombs. They, want to, they seem to have the technology to make that uh, in a miniature, to put in a nuclear and put that on a missile. Pyongyang has ordered the 70 trucks of, uh, to launch uh, the missiles, and it can be uh, considered as an arsenal indicator. The diplomacy, the demilitarized zone, uh, the insults by Twitter, the photos and uh, the um, communication by television makes difficult to imagine a treaty that's um, 
eh, ben de, de nuclear weapons. Pakistán, por su lado, el conflicto entre ambos países por la región de Cachemira ha provocado múltiples guerras. The conflict el ataque between de la, now India, India and Pakistan y Bombay en 2008 have un made a, a, a provoked a lot of wars. Que propone un ataque inmediato con fuerzas de choque en la frontera como represalia antes de que la comunidad internacional It propose a choke uh, forces in the front the border and uh, for the international community. Nueva Delhi uh, develops with Russia a program of hypersonic missiles and submarines. Islamabad counterweights the, the, uh, his uh, weakness strategic, making the nuclear arsenal of missiles and his assigned uses. France in the uh, United, United Kingdom in some years uh, will reach um, will be reached by India and Pakistan. Can the uh, Indian politics, Kashmira, and the Islamic terrorist control seen from Pakistan uh, turn on a, a spark that escalates into atomic conflict? Now China, China with politics nuclear have been never to use nuclear weapons offensively just as a last resource, but nowadays it's in a big process of modernization and it worries the United States that it cannot prevent the Chinese weapons. Pekin is now the second producer of weapons. Russia, the Kremlin, have the doctrine more permissive about the nuclear weapons use and have, uh, uh, is making better the nuclear system and are making uh, trials in a great scale. Some examples of the avant-garde system, that's a hypersonic planeator that's capable of avoid the anti-missile systems of the United States. The missile Burevensky is a nuclear missile of the nuclear proposed missile that can uh, fly with a limited range. Now about the United States, there is a, a process of modernization in different phases. In 2002, Bush have a concept of prompt global threat. And with the necessity to make uh, able to attack any place of the planet with conventional weapons. And Bush um, started the hypersonic uh, race and the hyperfinanciation as of anti-missile uh, protection, even though China and Russia are way ahead in the race. La nueva estrategia nuclear de la administración Trump, the new strategic, uh, the nuclear strategy of the Trump administration are in 2018 um, have fabricated new artifacts of the of low potent to counterweight the supposed uh, um, strategic uh, hole. La nueva cabeza nuclear, V76-2, the new uh, nuclear head, W76-2, have a charge of 5 and 6 kilotons and have started to be launched in the submarines, uh, strategic nuclear submarines. It's estimated uh, that uh, around 50 heads will be launched and uh, will, be, will be prepared in the Trident missiles. Washington lo quiere vincular con la entrada de China en dicho acuerdo, lo que complica su prórroga. Por otra parte, Washington wants to uh, put the, 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 the treaty together with China, so that treaty is very difficult, el difficult to, to, make, de la guerra, to be made. To be made. Iraní, tira por tierra años de diplomacia y desvela escenarios explosivos. So the unconditional support to Washington and the politics of Saudi Arabia and Israel and the 
between Orient for the treaty without restriction and the control of the program of Iran, the assassination of the Qasem Soleimani and the Revolutionary Guard uh, takes out the diplomacy and revelates explosive scenarios. Si creyeran que ese uso salvaría la vida de 20.000 soldados estadounidenses. Además, contrariamente a la tesis sobre So in contrary to the thesis of the humanity of the fighters, one person percentage of the uh, Americans would approve the bombarding of a conventional that to to kill 100,000 Iranian civils with the uh, effort to intimidate Iran to give up. Thank you. So I will present now Carlos Umaña. Carlos Umaña is a doctor of the Costa Rica and he's a visual artist and he is a member of the EPPNW the International Physicians for the Prevention of the Nuclear War, and he's part of a member of ICAM, and he's an activist. His work is about making people conscious about the nuclear weapons, about, uh, and making politics uh, relevant about the, uh, the production of the nuclear weapons. He worked in uh, a lot of forums and, had, uh, and he, he, uh, he made a lot of uh, countries uh, unite in this fight. Well, thank you for inviting me here. Thank you for this presentation. Thank you for all the colleagues in, in here. I am part of the ICAM. And we won the Nobel uh, Prize, and here it is, our little friend. And in this ceremony, we have our dear Setsuko that, uh, that made the, the uh, acceptation of the Nobel Prize. So, I fight for this, for the prohibition of the nuclear weapons, that's called the humanitarian um, disarming. So the nuclear weapons, humanity nowadays are facing two uh, threats. The, the Weather crisis and the nuclear crisis. So it's a multi-dimensional crisis because the, the, not only the people are dead at the, the moment of the explosion, but it's, it creates an inhabitable desert and the people that survive for that explosion will suffer horrible consequences for their whole lives. Not, not only them, but also the future generations. It's very important to have a response from Cruz Roja of Socorro about this nuclear uh, because the, the victims will suffer alone and suffer horribly. So in this technological era, the nuclear weapons, they, uh, they have an electromagnetic pulse that goes to the, to the atmosphere and they can change a huge um, territory and they can uh, affect all the technological um, machines. So this is a, a tragedy. So we have, I have, uh, I have Milutin at my side, and he can confirm that it's not a teor theoretical thing. So the apocalyptic. Apocalyptic horror is not something that's uh, on the theory anymore. So, if we consider that one weapon is launched at 12 a.m., 
the world will be destroyed in just 700 seconds. Estaba a siete minutos para la medianoche. Ahora, ¿por qué el riesgo es tan aumentado? But why the risks are, are, are bigger now? Por la retórica incendiaria de los líderes eh, de los Because of the incendiary discourse of the leader uh, of the our representative today. Por, eh, el, la, la propia because of the weather, de uh, uh, for the climate crisis that we live now, and also because of the, de de una de de armas the accidental Solamente detonation of the nuclear weapon. We have a thousand accidents about the, uh, with the nuclear weapons, eh, and some la, of them la, also la had a potential uh, danger eh, of uh, threatening the world. So we have now a lot of cities that can be minutos, detonated in any eh, time now. A so they are very vulnerable, vulnerable by any technical error. The, the, the company Future of Life. Future Será una says that the, the Entonces, bueno, end of the world will be probably be by the accident of the nuclear no weapon. Armas que se pueden utilizar en contra de ningún blanco militar. De hecho, están hechas para atacar solamente a poblaciones. These weapons y, are not made to attack no political uh, no centers, but civ civil Porque centers. Porque utilizarlas sería un acto suicida en realidad. But using them, it will be suicidal. So what's the what's the point? El valor es en realidad un valor simbólico. So that's just a symbolic value. Es un valor. It's just eh, for eh, a, que, a cause that uh, of, of making a, palabras, a threat. Nuclear. De, de and making words more powerful. De una a través de su poder so it makes a, de, eh, a country more powerful by their eh, este es destructive power. No solamente han construido los países nucleares, se ha construido con el apoyo y con la And this was built with the embargo, permission of all the world. En, en el 2017, but this is changing. In the July 7th, UNO has approved the uh, treaty eh, for ahora, to ban eh, the nuclear weapons from 177 countries. Ha funcionado con las otras armas de destrucción masiva. Now we know that this kind of treaty works. Las municiones en racimo que primero fueron prohibidas y después fueron eliminadas. Y First they were just prohibited and now they are being eliminated. Es el proceso que también la prohibición en el referéndum de 1986 decidió prohibir las armas de destrucción masiva para poder uh, also eh, be part of OTAN. Y bueno, los, los ejemplos de estigmatización con esclavitud sorry. también fue un, un proceso similar. Estamos ahora ante un cambio de paradigma. We, now, we are now facing a paradigm change de un país, eh, cada vez lo da menos that a, la prestige, a prestige of the country is not measured anymore by the destructive capacity. Eh, ese es un momento this en is a moment where we have to construct uh, we have to build the peace among all of us. Now, we want, I want to say that we have the great privilege to hear Setsuko Tsurubo, that somebody that has lived the horrors of a nuclear attack. And she is a uh, very admirable I woman, woman and I admire her very much and she worked her whole life and she worked from a very early age to tell the world the consequences of the nuclear weapons, hoping that her experience will not be lived by the others in a, in a bigger, bigger scale. So she wants to help the world. Así que pues, so gracias. thank you very much, and so enjoy here today. Thank you very much.
c'est sous camp. Thank you, Carlos. So, I would like to present our last, uh, our last guest. So, the anniversary is the same as my, uh, my birthday, so I would like to present Setsuko Thurlow. I had 13 years old when the bomb came down on 1945 from two kilometers where she was from. So it made her a very strong woman to denounce the, the proliferation of the nuclear war from campaigns around the world. 60 years after the bomb changed her life forever, Setsuko received the Nobel Prize for the Peace in 2017. And Setsuko Tsurlo, having been here, is a is an honor for all of us. Thank you very much for being here. Thank Thank you very much for the invitation to be with you here today. I really feel privileged to be here. As Carlos was speaking, I was looking at everybody's faces, and everybody looked very serious, and I'm glad you are serious, because we are going to talk about something very serious. And believe me, when I talk, Every word reminds me of pain, unforgettable pain. So it's not exactly a pleasant story, but let's think about it together. It's the fate we are confronting together. I would mostly talk about my personal experience and the experience of my school friends and families, and my personal perspective of how nuclear weapon has been uh, developing and being abused against us. I was a 13-year-old grade eight junior high school student. And in 1945, Japan was losing badly in war. We hardly had the regular academic work in the classroom. We were mobilized to, to, to work for the army and city governments and so on. We did uh, agricultural things like uh, rice planting or working with the soldiers' clothing. And the last task I had was to learn how to decode Secrets, Japan's top secret information. Can you imagine 13 year old girl was recruited by the army headquarters to be trained to be a, a decoder. So about three weeks prior to the bombing, about 30 of a, about 30 girls from my school was recruited, was sent to the Army headquarters. And that very day, August 6, 1945, was Monday, the very first day of our work to act as a full-fledged um, decoder, assistant. Uh, we walked to the headquarters which was one mile, 
1.8 kilometer away from the ground zero, hypocenter. And at 8.15 in the morning, the Major Yanai was giving us the pep talk. You girls, you got the sufficient training. You're capable of doing this and this. And this is the day you start proving your patriotism, loyalty to the emperor. We said, yes, sir. And at that second, I saw the bluish white flash all over the window. And I had the sensation of flying up into the air. I don't know how many seconds I was flying up there, but I still have that sensation of flying, floating in the air. And when I regained the consciousness in the total darkness and the silence, I found myself pinned under the collapsed building. The strong blast generated by the detonation of the atomic bomb above 600 meters above the ground flattened all the buildings in the city. So obviously, I was falling down together with the building I was in. And, and when I regained the consciousness, it was so silent, and I knew I was confronting death. Then I started hearing whispering voice, the girl's voice, mother, help me, God, help me. So I knew I was not alone. The girls were still with me in the same room. Then all of a sudden, the strong male voice said, don't give up, don't give up. I'm trying to free you. Keep moving, keep pushing, keep kicking. And you see the sun ray coming through that opening. Crawl toward it as quickly as possible. So that's what I did. And by the time I came out of that rubble, it was on fire. I looked back, and for a second, I wondered if I could do something to help my girlfriends. But I couldn't go back into the flame. But the two other girls managed to come out. So three of us were together. Although it happened at 8.15 in the morning, and it was a bright, sunny summer day, by the time I came out, it was dark like twilight. Perhaps because of all the smoke and particles and dirt and dust and everything going up into the sky. Then as my eyes got used to, I was able to see some dark moving object near me. And I saw the procession of ghosts. I say ghosts because although they are still human beings, but they did not look like human beings. Their hair was just all standing up and covered with the blood, burned, blackened, and swollen, and some people were carrying their eyes and slowly shuffling from the center part of the city towards me as they collapsed their, burst, their stomach burst open and intestine stretching out. The soldier said, you girls joined that procession, escaped to the nearby hills. We did by stepping over the dead bodies and dying people. At the foot of the hill was a huge army training ground, about two football fields combined. By the time we got there, the place was packed with the dead bodies and 
nine people. Everybody, everybody was in a faint voice begging for water. Give me water, water please. Nobody was screaming for help. Nobody was running for help. It was like a city of death. Nobody had that kind of physical and psych psychological strength to scream and shout and run. We three girls were relatively lightly injured so we decided to go to the nearby stream, washed off the blood, and tore off our blouses, and soaked them in the cold water, and rushed back to the dying people, and put the wet cloth over the mouth of the dying people, who desperately sucked in the moisture, <laughs> like that, and then they, looked at me, and then, thank you, and that was it. For the rest of the day, uh, we continue uh, to serve in that capacity. Well, I quickly look around this huge ground and see if there were any doctors and nurses helping, but I didn't see one single healthcare professional about 80% of the healthcare, healthcare professionals who killed them were killed in the bombing, and the remaining 20% were working some other places, not where I escaped to. That meant under the hot sun, no water, no medication, no healthcare professionals' attention. Tens of thousands of people lost their lives. When the darkness fell, we sat on the hill, and all night we watched entire city burn, feeling stunned from the massive death and human suffering we had witnessed all day. That was my very first day. I said group of about 30 girls, those were selected girls who were at Army headquarters, but the rest of the girls from my schools were at the center part of the city together with the other grade seven and grade eight students from all the other high schools of the city, about seven to 8,000 of them. They were there to do certain manual labor for army and city government. It was hot day, hot sun. <coughs> <coughs> Under the hot sun, the boys took off the shirts, their bare, bare back. They were ready and eager to work. And then the nuclear weapon came down, came down. It was dropped way up. How many? I, uh, I understand the the heat of the center of the bomb explosion was over a million, many million, I don't know, but anyway. But the, the fireball came down gradually to the ground level where we were. And on the ground level, the heat was about 4,000 degrees Celsius. So human beings on the streets, on the ground, were scorched, incinerated, vaporized, carbonized by the heat 
of 4,000 degree centigrade. So, seven, 8,000, grade seven and eight kids. So, my own age group had the greatest uh, um, injury. My own sister-in-law was a teacher supervising the students there. Um, we searched her body, but we never found it. Um, my sister and her four-year-old child were in the center part of the city, walking over the bridge, going to the clinic. And of course, there was nothing to protect them between the explosion. By the time I saw them the following day, I could not recognize them. They were totally unrecognizable. I say, I would describe my little four-year-old nephew, just a chunk of melted flesh. That's what he was. But he, kept, but he kept begging for water and water. So did my sister. My sister kept feeling guilty until her death because her husband was away at the war and it was her job to protect this precious little boy. So she kept sorting how sorry she was she failed to protect her child, and she felt sorry to her husband. She kept begging for forgiveness until her last breath. Um, well. The special characteristic of the nuclear weapon is the radioactive poisoning on human body. Let me just give you an example. Uh, my uncle and aunt survived. We were so happy. They had no cuts or no in external injury. But maybe a week later, they started uh, having the purple spots all over their body. That was a bad sign. They were going to die. And indeed they did. But my parents went and uh, looked after them. And uh, according to my mother's description, uh, they were both um, their internal, uh, their intestine seemed to be rotten and coming out as black, thick liquid. And from inside, everything was melting and coming out. Um, <clears throat> the, this radiation was very eerie thing for us because nobody knew anything about the nuclear weapon and what the nuclear weapons do to human body. Something spooky starts showing up and the hair start coming off. As people start bleeding, internal bleeding, high fever. And so doctors thought, well, this high fever, this must be scarlet fever. You know, that was the easiest thing they can imagine. No, those are all new type of symptoms caused by radioactivities. Um, indeed, it was uh, indiscriminate, massive, um, killing, murder, indiscriminate. The city was filled with about 
civilians, non-combatant, children, women, and elderly people. They were just indiscriminately wiped out by one stroke. Um, Just a few words about the after, aftermath of the... Um, well, I can't really describe how it was. Just, I want you to put yourself in my situation. You know, all of a sudden, the familiar community just disappears totally instantaneously. I used to see the inland sea far away, but that was close to us because the city was empty. Nothing was there. Everything became so small. It was an eerie, eerie feeling. And then about the radiation effect and um, disaffected people, Immediately, some people died immediately, a week later, a month later, a year later, or 10 years later. Uh, there is a story of a young girl. She was a baby when she, she was exposed. And she grew up healthy, and she loved running. Very athletic type of girl. But one day, as she was running in the competition, she fell. And that was it. That was the beginning of her suffering as a leukemia patient, as a result of the delayed effect of radiation. And there was a story in Japan when something like that happens and you start folding the, new, the paper, paper crane, folding your wish in each folded paper crane and wishing for recovery, quick recovery. I think she folded about 699 or something. She finally passed away. So here was a girl, active, who wanted to live very much and suddenly died this way. When this story spread throughout Japan, all the school children donated their pocket money and were sent to Hiroshima. With that money, the statue of little girl by the name of Sadako was uh, established. Maybe you have seen that picture. It's a very well-known uh, children's story throughout. But anyway, it was eerie because you never knew when this might happen. And um, parents were very concerned that their children may one day suddenly collapse. So real fear and anxiety. And in those days, first thing we did in the morning was to check every part of our body, make sure there was no purple spot, because it's a bad sign if you see one. So with that kind of fear and anxiety, and the people who suffered from the very bad um, case of burn, you can imagine many people I had this kind of ugly scar. And they had a hard time. Um, they suffered from um, discrimination. Oh. And even if you don't have anything ugly like that, people who are outside of the city felt that the people who were in the city at that time had been exposed to radiation. Therefore, you can contaminate the poison from them. 
So once again, this kind of discrimination spread throughout the world. The communication system was not as, not, was not as good as it is today. It took a long time uh, for other parts of Japan to find out exactly what was happening. Uh, without accurate information, this kind of um, discrimination was rampant. So people who lost, well, everybody lost the homes. Everybody became the homeless. And the people who were lucky went outside of the city and to stay with their relatives and friends. But uh, many of them have to hide their identity in order to avoid the discrimination. But let me just add a few words about uh, uh, social political factors which intensify the difficulties of the um, survival of the survivors in the aftermath. You see, Hiroshima happened on August 6th. Three days later, Nagasaki happened. On August 15th, Japan finally surrendered. And early in September, American occupation forces arrived, headed by General MacArthur, who became the supreme commander, no longer the emperor. Em emperor was to hide away. And uh, Mr. MacArthur said, I came to Japan to achieve two purposes. One is to demilitarize Japan. Second is to democratize Japan. Very good. And he did some good things. Democratize Japan, well, for example, to reform the labor uh, relationship or uh, financial system, especially women's status. The women could vote and so on. So some good things happened. But as far as Hiroshima and Nagasaki were concerned, he did totally opposite thing he said he came for. Let me give you just a couple of exam and examples. First of all, uh, in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, um, a research center, medical research center, called Atomic Casualty uh, hmm? A, B, C, C. Atomic Bomb. Hmm? Atomic Bomb. Bomb Casualty Commission were established. Well, people were so excited, so happy, because they had been suffering without any medication. And uh, the specialists would be helping Japanese doctors to learn what this is all about. But, Soon we found out the sole purpose of ABCC was to study the effects of radiation on human body, period. Not to help the dying, injured people. You can imagine how the survivors felt. They felt already they were guinea pigs with the atomic bomb. And again, we are being guinea pig, used as a guinea pig to see the relationship between radiation, radio activities on human body. Then when newspaper, Japanese newspapers started writing about human suffering of survivors. Um, occupation forces started censorship. They had to check what's acceptable for publication, what's not. Some newspaper companies were forced to close the door. And then worse still, confiscation started to take place. 
because many people kept diaries. They wrote letters. Some people who had so much pain in their hearts expressed that pain by writing the Japanese short poems and so on. Or pho photographs, slides, or fi films, or even medical information. Anything which indicate the human suffering caused by atomic bomb were confiscated by occupation forces, 32,000 items in all, and they were taken, they were shipped back to United States. So those kind of things were happening during the seven years of uh, occupation. So you can imagine people soon get the message, huh, we're not supposed to talk about the horrible experience. Americans didn't care uh, whatever you write. What a glorious triumph, triumph of the science and technology they achieved by producing those bombs. But what unspeakable human suffering those things caused. That was not to be known by the world. This is why hiding, confiscation taking place. So, people soon learned how to live in the depression and the oppression of society. <clears throat> so I can't begin to tell you, but all these, all those years, we have been fed with misinformation, half-truth, lies, secrecy most of the time, manipulation of situations. And in 1952, Japan regained the sovereignty. For the first time, the researchers and scholars and journalists were able to seek out the information from around the world and put them together and begin to see the meaning of the experience we had in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But of course, we disagreed with many of the things we read from the United States. Mr. Truman said, well, it was necessary. He had no choice but to drop the atomic bomb. That's not true. Well, nowadays, and majority of historians would agree it was not a military necessity, it was a political move just to use the bomb before the Russian, sorry, before the USSR um, joined the Allied forces. Remember the Allied, the and Stalin agreed to join the Western forces three months after the Germany surrender, and that was May the 8th. So, August 8th, they, they kept their promise. They joined and they started attacking Japanese army in Manchuria. So, but anyway, Mr. Truman wanted to use the bomb before the, Rus the Soviet Union joined. Anyway, that was not necessary. Japan had been defeated already. People were starving. All the plane, not all, but most of the planes and ships had been sunk. And soldiers 
in the station at the Pacific, they didn't even have the bullets or munition to fight with. That was the condition, and Mr. Truman knew it. But uh, they said, well, in order to end the war quickly, and bomb, those bombs had to be used. That was the official statement, and it became the American myth. And even today, people believe it, and then, okay. So those bombs did a good job. It contributed to the ending of the war quickly. So, good. It was, it was terrible, but still, it was necessary. So that kind of mentality, I think, allowed the nuclear arms race uh, to continue, to start and continue for such a long, long time. But I think it's been 75 years, but still, I think, the majority of people, uh, depending on that American myth, I think, justifying the use of weapons. Um, well, when survivors, I was still a kid, but uh, when the survivors began to put pieces of information together, they realized this is the beginning of the nuclear age. Well, somebody is planning to prepare for the nuclear war by developing more, by making more, by storing up more. And this is a dangerous world it's going to be. What is our responsibility? Why are we still alive? Why did we survive? What should be our responsibility? So, survivors came to the conclusion. It is a moral imperative. We talk what we witness, what we experience, and speak out loud and clear to the world. That is our moral imperative. And that's what we've been trying to do. Now, it, let me say when the turning point for my life came. You see, I first finished my university education in Japan and then received a scholarship to go to the United States to study social work. That was 1954. And if you remember, 1954 was a special year because United States tested the largest hydrogen bomb at the Bikini Atoll in Marshall Island in the South Pacific. And nuclear weapons are many, many times, thousand times more destructive than atomic bombs. Well, I think it was March 1st, 1954. Yeah, that happened. Well, when the Japanese heard about testing, Japan went crazy. Wow, not just Hiroshima, not only Nagasaki. Now, Marshall Islands, those people are sharing the similar symptoms, loss of hair, bleeding, and people are still dying today, by the way. Um, and that was the summer I arrived in the United States, and newspaper people asked me, hey, you are survivors from Hiroshima. What is your opinion? What's happening in the South Pacific? So I... Uh, naively said everything I had in my mind, that I have to stop. Preparing for nuclear war, I have to stop. And no more Hiroshima, no more Nagasaki, no more uh, bikini, and so forth. And next day, the newspaper had a write-up, and I started receiving unsigned hate letters. 
How dare you? You are against the American nuclear policy. Go home where you come from. But I just arrived from Japan. I couldn't go home. We were not flying those days. It took me two weeks to sail across the Pacific Ocean. Anyway, I thought, my goodness, in this hostile society, how can I survive? How can I go to school? Anyway, that was a really traumatic experience for me. Brand new school, limited language skill, to do soul searching by myself, where well, professor gave me his home, I was alone, and I just had to think, how am I going to survive here and to live here? Am I going to pretend and put the zipper over my mouth? Or am I going to live differently? Well, I am, I am grateful. I came out with a stronger commitment. Unless I speak out, who can speak? I saw it, I experienced. So that was really the turning point for me to be activist, where well, I didn't know the word activist at that time, but uh, I knew it would be extremely difficult to live in North America, especially in America, but um, I did. And, uh, well, it has been a very difficult life to share my message, but gradually, like-minded people surround me, and I was able to work with them. And uh, I just marvel at the great change. The society has changed. Now we have millions of people who think alike. Um, well, well, maybe I won't bother <laughs> telling some of the difficult situations, but. Uh, But the greatest difficulty I had was to realize one same historical fact can be seen, perceived, and analyzed in such a different way. And uh, I found the people in the States just busy justifying and not being able to see. I know it's a long story, so I would cut short. You can just have to use your imagination about difficulty. But something great started to happen. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm jumping all over the place. I feel that initially, when the nuclear age started, there was an outcry of the world from moral point of view. The churches and so on just protested, White House and so forth. But gradually, uh, militarism and the industrial complex, somebody was making money by making the nuclear weapon. And militarists was thinking of eventual domination of the world, military power. So those people got together, they made the team, they, their voices start pushing aside the moral view of the churches and so on, which were coming to White House. I 
so often I wondered how in the world can people accept the notion of deterrence, which seemed to be the basis, the cornerstone of nuclear policy, of the nuclear weapon states. Deterrence means to have, to equip ourselves with more of those wicked bombs and threaten the enemies. If you ever get close to us, well, this is how much we have. This kind of threat tactic. Well, first of all, to me, who became Christian after the bombing, how in Christ's name this kind of morality can be acceptable? To use nuclear weapon means you are ready to kill millions of people simultaneously. My little nephew, one little nephew, melted to be a chunk of flesh. And you see millions of them, entire city. And this is the kind of massiveness and grotesqueness of the horror we are talking about. Please imagine that if we should ever start another nuclear uh, attack, it's not going to be just a regional thing. It could be a mess of a large scale could be potentially the end of humanity and the planet. That's the kind of massiveness. Well, I guess we just simply have to use our imagination. And, and one thing I learned through the experience is it's not the house, it's not the clothes, it's not the good food, it's human life to live to be given the opportunity to live each day. That is the supreme gift we receive. And so we have to, we really have to reprioritize our way of thinking what is important. You see, those militarists are making decisions about nuclear weapons. How much percent of taxpayers' money should be going to produce armament and in order to kill millions of people? <laughs> well, thank goodness, about 10 years ago, the new way of thinking in the peace movement happened, humanitarian way of looking at nuclear weapon issue. Let's put the humanity, let's put human being in the center of our consideration instead of deterrence and there's so much money, such strategic theories and doctrines and so on. So I think that new concept really galvanized the world attention to this new movement. I think that was part of the success of the ICANN movement. Anyway, 75 years of human struggle with nonsense. Some president said, oh, nuclear weapon uh, is uh, survivable. Well, as someone who survived the very small scale nuclear experience, I cannot say that. Anyway, um, I, I'm, I have jumped all over the place, <laughs> but my message is it's the human life we have to put full attention protect them and nurture them, not to kill them, murder them, massacre them, the 
tens of thousands, hundreds, and a million of them. Ooh, that's not human beings' way of living. So that's the message to the politicians, to citizens, and to citizens. And each one of us have to be responsible. This is democracy. And each one of us study the issue and form your own opinion and let your opinion be known by the politician. And let the elected politician debate in the parliament and force the prime minister to make the appropriate, acceptable, and humane and human decision. It's for people. Let's, I, I would stop this here. Thank you. Bueno, ¿qué decir después de este testimonio? Well, what can we say after this testimony? Federico says that when we talk with the people, now we have the citizens. We have to talk. Mituli Petrovic said that poder matar a 100.000 personas si salvaban a un número determinado. Eh, some politics eh, said that it's valuable to kill some to save others. It's incredible that uh, in, in some moment increíble de actuar, pero el propio testimonio that, that, that que nos ha testimony of Setsuko is es una realidad. So as that it's a reality that can be repeated anytime. Creo so I believe that uh, the, the nuclear weapons have to be criminalized and we cannot uh, go to this other death that's the silence. Obviously the death of the bomb is horrible but also the silence is an ho another type of horrible death. So I would like to give the word for all of you for what we have heard and what we have to do as citizens to, for this not to happen again and to wish to all the ICANN and to say that you have an ally, active ally here in the, uh, to fight against these atrocities that are very sad and they are very possible to happen. So if anyone has any question, please. Good morning. Firstly, thank you for having done this act in the Complutense University. This university is where I studied. I, I spent a lot of uh, energy here as decane, and I teach, uh, have teached all my life here. So, I am retired now, but I, I continue somehow here and I appreciate very much this event. So I have to point that uh, studying uh, uh, politics here and being, uh, and since we were so conflictive, they, they sent us to another 
uh, a place a, a, a bit far away from here. So I remember a movie where we had to wait Frederick Barney, that was the minister that had made the opening, where finally Spain uh, uh, exhibited the, the movies in, in the original version, and I saw Hiroshima Mon Amor, and I, I, I was really uh, touched by this movie, and I saw the movie in the Casa de América, and as they sat here, the, the more important here is uh, two, now the, the climate crisis and the nuclear crisis. So we as a university, uh, university responsibles have to put this word to the students. I am worried from the tendency of the university, of the market, the business, of preparing the students to the market, and I don't think that's our main goal here. I think we are professionals of the education. So obviously, we have to be good professionals, but we have to be good citizens. There are other problems in the world. Now I am the president of the Refugees Commission and the, the condition of the, the immigrants is very worrying. The hunger, the poverty, it's not eliminated. With the students, we, we, we talked about the hunger in the world, but the, uh, we have the, a lot of good technology like 5G, but we still have hunger in the world. So I think uh, I, I am very grateful for this event, and I'm very sorry because I, I, I met more teachers in the, at the bar, at the coffee house, and here. So I saw some here, but they have already to go. But I believe that in my time, if some, some survivor of Hiroshima comes, it, it would be full. But why is now uh, here just uh, people just going about their, their specialization? The students are just worried about their professional uh, life. What about the culture? What about society? I, I, I teach very good students. They have good grades. Nobody are, are repeating the grade. They are very intelligent. They are very nice, but they, they are very ignorant in, in, in the culture, social um, uh, knowledge. So really, we, the teachers, the university professionals that have the, the intellectual tools that have to put that in service to fight uh, to um, this kind of causes. So we have to use our power to make the society better. So our economist colleagues, we have to be conscious about the problems of the world. We cannot say that everything is fine. So these are some considerations that I would like to do. So thank you for our guests that from this age having come here and having uh, this voice, this powerful voice here. And it must be very difficult to revive this. And it's admirable that she continues to fight for changing the world. So if we don't change something, this war will go to end. So thank you very much. So let's see if the next time we will be a full. Perdón, 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 no. Me dice que el chico está muy cansada, por lo tanto vamos a dar por finalizado el acto.
we will finish the act, so I will just say some uh, ending words. So thank you very much, everyone, for being here. And thank you especially Setsuko for being here, Carlos, Federico, and everyone for being here. And I cannot go without thanking Rafael Martínez Pont. I will use uh, Luis's word and thank uh, the university, everyone, Federico, Miki, Setsuko, and Rafael Martinez. Well, before we go, and having received these testimonies, testimonies we will need your help. Si pensamos, if we por think ejemplo, que en 1998, that 1998, when India made their, their trials, they said they, they, they did that because they have to prove the world that they were not uh, weak. So we have the obligation to change the discourse. So we need your help. We need you to unite in this campaign. Not directly. You don't need to go to the office, but you, I need to do to make this uh, knowledge, this act, this act uh, known by everyone. Please, let's make a virtual digital community using the hashtag, uh, that hashtag armas nucleares no. So please take note of that, armas nucleares no, in Facebook, in Instagram, in Twitter. Hashtag armas nucleares no, and please tweet that, and uh, from that we will contact you to get help to get this message spread around the world and to achieve that the countries that uh, have uh, this stigma that so we can get Spain to sign this treaty. So thank you very much, and so we will see each other soon. Thank you very much.